Good afternoon, everyone. I thought I would come in here and do another recipe of a gravy that I've never done before that I found on allrecipes.com. And I'm going to flip this down so you can see my see it cooking on the uh, what I'm doing on the stove. Um, don't worry about my dogs. They're, they're barking outside about something outside. Anyway, what I've got... What I've got in here are, are onions, onions and garlic, and sauteing them. And and I know I just, with the pampered chef, I probably don't need to use saute or use vegetable oil, but you gotta saute them until they're translucent. I've got five cloves of garlic and a half a and a half a cup of, of uh, chopped onion in here. Hi to everybody coming in. Hi. It's gonna be hard to look at your comments, but I can see them. It's tilted down enough so that if, if I can see, I can tilt it down a little more if I have to. She's, he's really carrying, he sees something outside. Anyway, um, I've never made this gravy before, and I thought I'd come in here and make this, because I haven't really had my lunch yet, and I was going to make me um, cook, ma uh, fry a potato, or not fry a potato, but bake a potato, and and then uh, put this uh, gravy on the potato. And gravy is better than what you can buy in the store. You don't want to buy any gravy in the store, because when, when you buy gravy in the store, you're getting all kinds of chemicals and stuff in it. So you want to be able to buy, to, uh, buy your own, or I mean, make your own. So I'm going to just do this until it's translucent. Like I said, I wouldn't have had to use the vegetable oil with this Pampered Chef pan, but I thought I'd better anyway. So it might saute it a little bit better because I don't want it burning on the bottom. It just makes it, tra it'll just make it translucent. It doesn't have to cook very long. And let me look on here. Welcome to everybody coming in. Um, See, it was a third cup of chopped onion and five Clark garlic cloves. So, and I just have to do that for a little bit. Let me see what my directions say here so I can keep it, keep on track. Um, about five minutes, it said. Well, I haven't set my timer, so I'm just going to go ahead and set that now. It'll be a little bit longer than five minutes, but I don't think it's going to really matter. So I'll just do that now. Set it for five minutes, and then we'll. And then I'll, when it goes off, I'll just keep stirring this. But this is something that we can. You can all make yourself. It's it'd probably be very good for you. Um, and I'm going to post it up on on my on my Facebook group. I probably may have before at one time. I'm not sure, but I'm going to post it up there again, just in case I didn't. And I want everybody to to uh, see what it looks like. I think, I hope you can see my pan okay. You can't see the whole thing, but I don't think that really matters. I could probably push it back a little further, if, but I don't want to tip the thing over. So, um, hi, good to see you. Welcome, those that are, that are coming in. And like I said, this saucepan is from Pampered Chef. Um, it's a very good saucepan. Nothing really, really sticks and burns in it. I'm just gonna let it go a little bit till the five minutes is up, because it's sauteing on medium heat, <laughs> Because you want to get them translucent. And then when you're translucent, then you put the rest of the stuff in there. Um, this is a simple gravy to make. It's one that I have made before, but I don't think I've ever periscoped it. So I thought I'm going to come in here and I'm going to periscope it. Welcome to everybody coming on. Um, if I can't see who it is that's coming on, it's because I'm, it's, it's tilted way down. And I want, to be able, I want you to be able to see what, what I'm cooking on the stove. And see my pot, my pot instead of uh, me. I think I might just try to, without tipping it, I'm going to try to tip, move it over just a little bit, just a little bit tad. There we go. That's a little bit better. Sorry about my arm getting in there, but just a little bit better. You can see it a little bit better now. Just a tad. There. There. That's perfect. That's perfect. Now you can see inside my pot. It's, 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 it's trial and error to get this tripod set up just the way it's supposed to be. Alexis Candu from Pampered Chef has got the same one. and She told me what to do, but I, I haven't really quite figured it out yet. But I'm learning it. I'm getting it done. So, as you can see, it's, it's, it's going pretty good right now. And as soon as it gets translucent, it's probably already there, but I wanted to make sure I set it for five minutes. We've got a little bit less, little, um, less than three minutes to go. And then I'll... Then I will uh, put everything else in it that needs to, that I need to put into it. And this is a going to be a real good gravy that you could probably use on anything. You know, whatever you want to put it on. Basically, potatoes. Um, I don't. I see. I don't have very many in here. I don't know what's happening today. But anyway, I'm hoping and praying that you'll share this out with everybody else, and so we can get more people in here. Um, 
Oh, thank you to those that are coming on right now. Um, maybe people aren't getting their, their uh, notifications again. That's how, that happens sometimes. Periscope is real bad for giving giving out notifications. You just don't get them. And it's it's terrible, but that's what happens. But um, So you can see I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get this um, sautéed. I know it's in, in oil, but you saute, it's better to sauté it in oil than try to try to do it all by itself because I don't want to burn it. And it's just about a little less than two minutes and then I'll then I can go ahead and put everything else in it that it calls for. And I'll get my iPad over here so I can have the instructions that I need. Because it tells me exactly what to do. Okay. And the next thing I'll do is stir in my flour. Now the recipe called for all purpose flour. I think it was a half a half a cup but I decided to use tapioca flour instead of all-purpose flour. It, it'll serve the same purpose. It will still, it will still um, set up because you want it, you want flour in your gravy to thicken it. You don't want a real runny gravy, and this will thicken it. So the tapioca flour will work great. So that's what I've decided to use instead of regular flour. I know this is probably boring watching this part of it. But when you when I get the rest of it in there, then you'll be able to to uh, see how how it looks because it'll be very very nice when I get done with it, and I'll put everything in there. Welcome to those coming in, and you can share this out if you so, so choose, so we can invite other invite other people to uh, thank you for inviting followers, inviting people to come in here and and. Uh, watch this because this is a gravy that everybody might like to might like to do it's a simple gravy um, it's not it's not hard it's just a little prep work I wanted to do the onions I wanted to chop the onions and mince the garlic before I came in here because I wouldn't do that in front of you that's a little boring but I hope got everything all taken care of and got it in my pot so that, okay now it's done all right now now I'm going to stir in the tapioca flour I use tap like I said tap well oh, Sorry about that. Tapioca flour instead of instead of all-purpose flour. I'll clean up my mess here. Um, what did you say? Uh, I did, I didn't see what your thing was because it's it's kind of um, cat, uh, lopsided on me. You, would you post that again because I didn't quite see what you said. Now I guess the nutritional ease. Um. And I've got four teaspoons of nutritional yeast. Uh, probably, if, it, if it's not mashed potatoes, it'll be um, a baked potato. That's basically what it'll do. Because I like baked potatoes. Put them in the microwave. So that's probably what I'll do. Although mashed potatoes do sound good about now, I'll tell you that, that sounds real good. We're on the cool side right now, so they would sound good. Okay, I'm going to stir this in here. That's the nutritional yeast. And, and, and soy sauce. Okay, well, I've got to do my soy sauce. And this, uh, this is the um, Bragg's liquid aminos that I'm using, not actual soy sauce. And four tablespoons of this. Um... And it has to become a paste. You can see me pouring this in here. It has to be a, a smooth paste. And as you can see, it's, it's coming along. You want to get it a smooth paste. It's going to be a paste right now. Okay, now I'm going to, I have two cups of vegetable broth here, and this is organic. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put this in very gradually and whisk it in.
wants to get all over everything else but where it's supposed to go. Isn't that something? Everything wants to get on the on the stove. Oh, here's back. Okay, I'll put it like this. There we go. Thank you to everybody coming in and sharing this out. So you got to do this very gradually. You don't want to do it all at once. You want to thin it out a little bit. That's the best of it. Welcome to everybody coming on. This is my vegan gravy that I'll probably use for, I can use it for mashed potatoes or fried potato or baked potato. Probably a baked potato, I imagine, because I like baked potato. They goes real good together. And I'm going to whisk this like this so I can kind of want to get the lumps, get the lumps out of the uh, whatever. Because you don't have, it has a tendency to want to lump up. And you want to get all the lumps out. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to lump, get the lumps out. Welcome to everybody coming in. Okay. And then I'll see what else I need here. Okay. And then I can, I'm going to, uh, I'll get this here before I put everything else in it. Now it says a half a teaspoon of dried sage. And half a teaspoon of salt. I don't use regular salt, I use sea salt. I use that because that's much healthier for you than the regular salt. Okay, I just did reduce heat as a season. Reduce heat and simmer. Okay, I'm going to reduce heat and simmer. Put it on the simmer. For a fact, I better bring it to a boil first. Put it down on here. I'm going to raise it up a little bit. i got to bring it to a boil, and then I'm going to reduce the heat and simmer it. Because if you do it, do it, you put simmer it first, you're not going to get it real hot. So i got to get it to a boil. And as soon as it starts boiling, now I'll, I'll reduce the heat, simmer it, and it's about 10 minutes or so, and it'll be done. And you can see this is a very good gravy. Simple to make, not hard to make at all. It's one that we can all make. Put it on your, see, look at that. Doesn't that look good? I just keep stirring it. You ask the thing with gravy. You want to stir it constantly. I know this is a nonstick pan, but I don't want the, the food sticking to the bottom of it. I don't want it burning it. Because even though these are nonstick pans, things can still burn if you don't watch them. Because I've had things burn into the bottom already. And it's easy to clean it up because these are these pans almost clean themselves. As soon as it comes to a boil, then I'll simmer it. It'll have to be simmered for five to ten minutes, and I'll set my timer. Or eight to ten minutes, I'll set my timer again, and then I can talk to you while it's being while it's simmering. And uh, welcome to to uh, those coming in. And thank you for coming in and sharing this out. I do appreciate it. This is a very simple recipe, one that we can all make. You can um, make it for your family, make it for your friends. I wasn't going to come in today, but I decided, well, I might as well come in because... Um, I don't normally do them on Mondays, and I had done a prophecy scope yesterday, but I thought I'm going to come in anyway and show you how to make this gravy so maybe you can make it yourself and um, learn how to, how to live healthy and, and be well and live, uh, eat, eat properly because you can eat the wrong foods and really um, cause a lot of problems to your body. Okay, it's starting to boil now, so I'm going to turn it down to simmer for about 8 to 10 minutes. And I'll set my, set this my, um, okay, I'll set it for about eight minutes. 
All right. Now, I'll turn it back up so you can see me for a little bit, and then I can turn it back down. It is simmering now, right now, so, I, so I'm going to put it on simmering. I'm just going to keep stirring it a little bit. But that is simple to make. And as soon as it gets done, in 8 to 10 minutes, I'll put it back down, and I'll let you see what it looks like. It, um, I have the best fun making my own foods. I really am. I'm really enjoying it because I'm learning a lot, too. Not only are you learning, but I'm learning, too, because I'm learning how to make different foods. Foods I've never made before. And I'm glad that I'm learning how to do this because we all need to learn how to, to make our own foods. Stop buying what's in the stores because what's in the stores is all processed and it's no good. They put a lot of chemicals in the processed foods, at least here. I know what's in it. I don't have to guess. Everything that I, that's in here is good. Um, some people question the nutritional yeast. I still use it because it gives a good flavor. I use it for my cheese sauce that I made yesterday. I made some cheese sauce yesterday because I had macaroni and cheese for lunch. So, And that cheese sauce can also be used in um, a recipe that I have for um, broccoli cheese soup. It calls for a cup of the cheese sauce. And it's actually really, really good. I've got two recipes for, the, for broccoli cheese soup. One is for uh, shredded cheese, and, this, and, this, and the one I'm talking about is for um, the... Uh, cheese sauce, but I like the cheese sauce one better than I do the other, but this is simple to make, it's very, 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 I like the simple, I like simple, it's, um, simple is better, um, because anything complicated takes too long, too, too darn long to do, and I don't, I don't like anything with a lot of, um, ingredients in it, I like things that are simple, and you don't, you know what's in it, you can almost count on one hand what's in it. Welcome to those coming in. You can share this out if you choose to. And this is my, uh, I can put this down a little bit. It's simmering right now. Um, it's got about less than six minutes to go. Um, I'm simmering my gravy. I wanted to, I wanted to uh, let you see me first for a little bit. And then when this gets done, that I can, <coughs> I can show you what it looks like after it's all simmered. I got to keep stirring this, and I thought, well, you don't need to watch me keep stirring it because that's all I'm doing is stirring something that's simmering, and I'll show you when it's done. But make your own foods if at all possible because you'll, you'll, your body will appreciate it, really. Let me tell you, your body will appreciate, appreciate you making things for it that are healthy. Don't put things in your body that are going to harm it because our bodies are not made for a lot of things that people put into them. They put bad chemicals in our bodies. Our bodies were never really made for th those chemicals. People don't think when they put them in their body. They buy things in the store without taking a look at the ingredients to see what really is in it. If they realized how many chemicals were in there, and those were all chemicals that are harmful to them, they wouldn't make them or wouldn't, wouldn't buy them. But the thing of it is the manufacturers, they really don't care because they know that people are going to buy them. They're not going to pay attention to the ingredients. So they're going to go ahead and buy them anyway. So the manufacturer just keep putting those chemicals in there and put them in as much as they can. And people, they figure, well, people will, people will buy them anyway. Well, I have gotten wise to them, and I will not buy any of their, any of their uh, foods that have chemicals in them anymore because they're not good for me, and I want my body to be healthy. I don't want to be sickly. That's why this world is so sick, because of the way people are eating. And you know something, since I've been cooking like this, I have not been, gotten sick. I've been a lot healthier. Um, people keep telling me that I look good. I've lost over 50 pounds. It, it was a, a struggle at first because I was tempted to go back and eat the normal foods I've been eating. But I decided, no, I can't do that anymore. I'm not going to, I'm not going to put that, put my body through that. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, do what I have to do to keep my, my body healthy. It's simple. All we have to do is just follow the eight laws of health. We have eight laws of health in our church. Eight laws of health. Nutrition. And I think it's, it's, there's air and there's rest. I don't know the, exactly um, what they are. Um, water. But we have eight laws of nutrition. Welcome to Periscope for the very first time. It's, it's, on, it's the acronym New Start. Take all the letters from the, from the word New Start, and that's what you get your... Um, your eight laws of nutrition, eight laws of health, actually, is what they is, what they are. But uh, 
I want to uh, follow those eight laws of health. Mm. We should all want to be healthy. Hi, Zebra. Good to see you. I'm uh, stirring my 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 gravy now, and I'll put it I'll, I'll put it over here on this thing as soon as I get it done, because I want you to see what it looks like. And I'll get a hot pad out so I can put it on there. So I can sit it up here, and then I won't have to put the thing down, and I can just, I can just let you see what the gravy looks like. I'm, I'm letting it simmer right now, um, for eight minutes. I got to stir it constantly, so I'm sim so I'm, I'm stirring it and stirring it. It's got about two minutes and fifteen seconds to go yet, and then when it's done, then I'll take it off the stove and I'll set it up here, and I'll let you see what it looks like. Um, it's actually very appealing, really. It really is. Um, it's thick, and like I said, this called for all-purpose flour, but instead of using all-purpose flour, I used tapioca flour, because tapioca flour will thicken it much better, I think, than your regular all-purpose flour, and it's better for you anyway. I, I bought my tapioca flour at Walmart. It's real simple. I, um, once I run out, I'm going to buy, be buying some more. It's starting, it's really, it's really thickening, but I have to keep stirring, because if I don't, it's going to, it's going to really make a mess in my pan, not to mention it's going to get way too thick and then I'm not going to be able to do anything with it. So I just keep stirring it and stirring it and it looks real good right now. And you'll be able to see it when I get it done. It's got a little bit more than a minute to go, which isn't very long. And then I'll pay, take it off the stove and I'll put it over here so, so I can show you what it looks like. But in the meantime, I'm going to talk to you for a little bit. And then we all need to start eating a little bit better than we have. Don't buy the processed foods in the store because all those processed foods are, are death traps, more or less. They got so many chemicals in them that they'll kill you. It, it's, I mean, that's what they're meant to do. The manufacturers don't really care. Because they feel as long as you're going to buy it, and people eat it, and they die, they really don't care. And it's not really fair. But, I, you know, I, I feel that the manufacturers have got some explaining to do as to why they continue to use chemicals in their foods that they should not be using. You know, they are accountable. They, they should be held accountable for the people eating the way. Although people buy, people choose to eat the, eat the foods, but I think that the manufacturers should be held accountable for making the foods such a way that they're chemical-ridden and that they cause our bodies to be broken down. Because it will it'll break your system down and, and cause a lot of problems. And I don't like that. Oh, it's just got a few seconds left to go. And I'll take this off, and then I'll set it over here. There. Now you can see. I put it back this way so you can see. You can see in the in the pot how good it looks. And I'll bring this up just a little. I don't want to bring it up too far because I don't want to burn my burn my tripod. There we go. Um, welcome to those coming in. And you can see my. Uh, put it back this way. I just got a little little maneuvering here. Hi. Good to see you. Welcome. And here's my gravy. As you can see, it's in the pot. Um, and I've got it all done. It didn't take very long to make. Um, simple to make. I'll post it up on my Facebook group. If people want to join my Facebook group, you can you can join my Facebook group. It's called Karen's Vegan Heaven. And um, we post um, vegan recipes in there. And hope, hopefully other people will try the vegan recipes. Um, oh, thank you very much. Um, what did I thicken it with? I used, it called for all-purpose flour, but I used tapioca flour. See, and it's really thick. I used tapioca flour. I like, I mean, I use all-purpose flour for different things, but I thought, well, gee, I'll have tapioca flour. It'd be a lot, it's a lot healthier, and it'd be better for me if I used that in any way. So that's what I did. I used tapioca flour. And as you can see, look at it. Not it look good. It looks really nice. So... That's, that's the easiest way to thicken it up. Now, I'll put the recipe I'll put the recipe on Facebook as the way it's written in the iPad. But then I'll also put down what I used because I like to tell people what I used. And so I, I remembered I had tapioca flour, and I thought, well, I might as well use that versus all-purpose flour. It might thicken it up with just a little bit more than your, tapio than your regular all-purpose flour. See how thick that is? Look, it's nice and thick. 
very thick. And that's what you want. I don't particularly like runny gravy. <laughs> Not at all. When my aunt was alive, and I was lived with her because my mother had died from a very young age, and, and my aunt took my brother and I in, she would help, I would help her cook as I got older, and her gravy was always runny. She never had it thick. Well, I don't particularly care for runny gravy. Now, my daughter-in-law does the same thing for Thanksgiving for the mashed potatoes. She has runny gravy, you know, and it runs down the sides of your mashed potatoes. I prefer it not to do that. But, however, her gravy is very good because she does make vegan gravy. And she'll mark, she'll mark which ones are which. So she'll have a vegan uh, loaf. She'll have vegan gravy plus a lot of veggies, and that's what I take. Um... Simple as can be. Now, of course, she has a lot of things that I wouldn't eat. She has a lot of pies, stuff that's not that good for you, sugar-laden. However, I do eat one, maybe one piece or so. But you don't want to go crazy with things like that because it's not good for you. It's harmful. But as you can see, my gravy turned out really good. It's nice and thick. I can bring it up to the camera and let you see. It's nice and thick. See how thick it is? Look at that. See, it's nice and thick. Look at that. See how thick it is? It looks really good. And it, it'll last It'll last me a little bit. You can put it on anything you want. You know, potatoes, if you have anything else you want to put it on. Basically potatoes. I've got it, like I said, I'm going to probably have uh, eggless, eggless noodles for lunch. I've got a pasta maker I make them in. Eggless noodles, and I'll make me a, a baked potato and put this gravy on there, and that'll be my lunch. Because I haven't had my lunch yet, and I and I wanted to get this made, and come in here and show you how to make it before I get my lunch going. You know, it's it's going to take a little time to get my lunch. Um, you have corn muffin and coffee. Well, corn muffin is okay, but um, coffee. Well, I must have a dad that said we don't drink coffee. That's that's got caffeine in it. That's why we don't drink it. Anything with caffeine, like your sodas. We don't drink that stuff because it's all a stimulant. It's not good for you. You don't want to put that kind of stuff in your body. It's harmful, whether you know it or not, too much of it. And that, a lot of times, that's what some people, that's all they'll do is they'll drink coffee or they'll drink tea, which is probably okay too. And most times people will drink soda. That's all they drink is sodas. And their bodies are got to be, I mean, their teeth have got to be rotten. You can't do that. You don't put that kind of stuff in your body. You know, I don't want to put that in my body, so I don't I don't drink it. I drink plain water. Lots of water. Oh, your coffee is caffeine free, which is <laughs> which I've never heard of coffee being caffeine free, but okay, that's great. Because there there used to be some I don't know if they still make it anymore, but um years ago the Adventists had, had a thing called um postum. P O S T U M. I don't know if they still make it or not. But that was a, an imitation coffee. I never really did like it. But um, I don't, like I said, I don't know if they still make it anymore. But that is, it's, a, it's hard to get used to that. I used to drink coffee just a little by little when I was younger. But there again, coffee is an acquired taste. I didn't really drink all that much of it because I don't like it that well. Maybe that's a good thing I don't like it. I don't drink tea either because I don't like it. So I just drink plain water. I drink water all day long. I'm always filling my water bottle up. Get it empty, fill it right back up again. Because our bodies are made of water. Our bodies are, are, are adjusted to water. They're not to the to the caffeine, like your soda pops, your uh, tea. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with tea. It depends on what kind of tea you have. Now, I, like I said, I'm not a tea drinker. I never have liked tea, so therefore I won't even go buy it. Because it it is an acquired taste. And I really have never really cared for it that much. Coffee can be an acquired taste too. I can take it or leave it as far as coffee is concerned. So I'd rather just drink water and be done with it and know that I'm going to be healthy just on that water because it water quenches my thirst and it, it makes me want to drink more of it. Now soda does not quench your thirst. On a hot summer day you drink soda you you don't your thirst doesn't get quenched. Now, I, I, with water I do. I'll, I'll get I'll get full of water, but then I'll wait a little while and I'll go back and drink more. With soda, it seems like you drink drink more soda, more soda, more soda, because you get so dehydrated. But the thing of it is, soda is not good for dehydration. It's not good if you if you find yourself dehydrated 
be sure and put lots of water into your system. That's why you're dehydrated, because you're not drinking enough water. I used to be that way, where I didn't drink as much water as I do now. And I would get so dehydrated. And I knew I was dehydrated. But now I drink lots and lots of water. I keep water up by my, on my laptop table. I keep the water bottle full. And if it runs out, then I'll get one of these and put up there. I just keep water by me at all times so I can drink it and, and not be dehydrated. Because it's very important that we keep our bodies maintained at all times. Well, I think I'm going to go for now because I need to get... I need to get my lunch going because I haven't had lunch yet. But I just wanted you to see, and I'll hold this up to the camera. If you want to take a screenshot of it, what my, my, what my gravy looks like. It looks real good. See, it's nice and thick. And I'm going to put this on a potato. And see how thick that is? So I thank you all for coming in and sharing this out. And until we meet again, take care. God bless and bye-bye. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Love you.